All good. Well, thanks for the opportunity to provide an update in relation to the activities concerning Operation Eclipse, which is investigating arson offences associated with illicit tobacco sales and retail outlets. Detectives from uh, Serious Organised Crime Branch and other specialist areas of SAPOL have conducted a series of searches today, and this is as a result of several weeks of intensive investigation into the criminal networks involved in the sale and distribution of illicit tobacco and the associated uh, intimidation offences that have been occurring. Those involved uh, in this particular activity, we believe are responsible for 16 arsons to date. And at eight o'clock this morning, detectives raided a premises at Blair Athol and arrested a 34 year old man for four counts of money laundering. Each of those counts carries a maxim maximum penalty of 20 years imprisonment. He has been refused bail and will be uh, appearing in the Port Adelaide Magistrates, Magistrates Court tomorrow. Detectives also raided three uh, business premises at Hendon, Queenstown and Rosewater, as well as one storage facility in Salisbury Downs. A search of those premises in conjunction with the Consumer and Business Affairs has resulted in the seizure of loose cigarettes, loose tobacco and vapes to the value of $358,595 and that amount is at the prices they are selling the illicit tobacco for. Three organised crime syndicates are believed to be involved in this particular uh, activity and we are strongly of the view that the, these are interstate organised crime syndicates pushing their way and expanding into the South Australian market. There is no place for this type of activity in South Australia. These people do not belong here and they are not welcome and we will be pushing back on them conducting their illicit activities in South Australia. As a part of this, we've identified and allocated our most senior organised crime investigator as the tactical commander for Operation Eclipse, and that is uh, Detective Chief Inspector Brett Featherby, and he, as the tactical commander, has the ability to access whatever resources are required from South Australia Police and in conjunction with uh, CBS to target these offenders who are committing these arson offences and intimidating uh, South Australian residents. To date, as in addition to the offence, offences identified today and the arrest today, there have been five arrests previously for arson, money laundering and serious criminal trespass. We have seized over $500,000 cash, three cars have been confiscated and somewhere in the order of more than $1 million worth of tobacco products and vapes has been seized in conjunction with the work of uh, consumer and business affairs in investigators. We'd encourage anybody who has information regarding the, the illicit activities around the sale of tobacco to make contact with police through Crime Stoppers. So far we have had numerous calls to Crime Stoppers and through that and our work with CBS we have, have identified over 200 stores in South Australia that are involved in the sale of illicit tobacco products and vapes. As I say, there is no room for these organised crime activities in South Australia and we'll be pushing back to ensure that the people responsible are held accountable for the, uh, the offences they're committing and the risks they're creating for the South Australian community. Happy to take questions. Um, what do you organise crime syndicates? Are they bikey groups or who are they? Uh, no, not, not specifically outlaw motorcycle gangs. These are organised crime syndicates based in Victoria and Queensland and there is one group in South Australia that we are targeting as well. Is that a new informed group, you believe? Uh, I won't elaborate on the specifics, but uh, at this point in time, they're the three primary um, syndicates that we are targeting. In terms of pushing back, so you say, is what are some specific tactics that police will be using? That can we expect tougher border force laws in between those, or crackdowns in between those states? Uh, we'll be working in conjunction with Victoria Police. We have been doing so for several months, and we will also be working alongside uh, Australian Border Force where appropriate but the, the main activities within South Australia involve South Australia Police investigators and consumer and business affairs investigators as well. Consumer and business affairs have primary responsibility for the regulation of the tobacco industry. Uh, any illicit tobacco products seized by and large will be managed by CBS and South Australia Police will deal with other evidentiary material taken from these premises. Are you expecting more arrests? Uh, watch this space. There will be more arrests. Uh, the activities today have given us further information to work on and uh, I think we're sending a very clear message to the people involved that this type of criminal activity is not welcome in South Australia and when we do identify the offenders we'll be taking harsh action and holding them accountable for that. 16 arsons in, in several weeks, it feels like a 
of almost one every night. How concerned are you about that escalation? Uh, we are very concerned about the number of arsons that have been committed. And as you say, um, over the last few days, it has been one a day. And to the, the, the arson that we are uh, dealing with most recently um, at Cowandilla, I think highlights the risk to the community. There were residents living in the very near vicinity of that particular arson, so the risk to life is real. And we are treating these offences as serious offences that require as much effort as we can put to it. Do you think the potential risk to the community, what is your message to the community in regards to this issue? The best thing the community can do is make contact through Crime Stoppers or directly to South Australia Police with information they have in relation to illicit tobacco shops. As we said, we have a wealth of information already, but we were always grateful to receive more information about activities around these illicit tobacco stores. The other thing for people to reflect on is their willingness to purchase illicit tobacco products and vapes from these stores creates a market for this particular activity, which is creating the environment that sees organised crime syndicates trying to exploit these retailers. Whilst the retailers may be committing offences in selling these products, our major concern is the threat to public safety as a result of the associated criminal activity, and that's what we're targeting. The people that were arrested from this morning's fire bombing, where do they sit in terms of the chain of command? Uh, we haven't made any arrests regarding this morning's fire bombing. Oh, this sorry. is a pre-planned uh, operation as a part of Operation Eclipse that was undertaken at 8am 8 8 this morning. Uh, we are continuing to investigate uh, the most recent uh, arson attack which occurred uh, late last night. What about the Blair Athol man, the 34 year old man? Where does he we believe he is a key player in relation to driving the activities that result in the arson offences being committed and we are continuing to investigate that. And so he's, he's obviously from South Australia, hasn't come here in the last... He's currently in South Australia. Um, we're determining the exact nature of his relationship with the organised crime groups but we'll have further information about that as we continue with Operation Eclipse. In terms of the store owners, are they cooperating with police? Are they too afraid to say how they're being threatened? Have any of them been threatened with their lives? Have their families been threatened? There are threats that have been communicated uh, via social media platforms and through direct contact with uh, retail store owners. Um, once again, we would encourage them to come forward, but there's also, you know, there's an element of their conduct which is attracting this type of attention. That conduct does not comply with the law. Um, notwithstanding that, we are still investigating uh, any information that's provided to us by the retailers. Over the border, we've seen they sort of damned if they do, damned if they don't. If they pay the tax, they're targeted. If they don't, they're targeted. Are we seeing the same here? We are seeing that there is a very... Uh, retailers of illicit tobacco are putting themselves in a, in a very difficult situation where the, the potential to be a victim of a more serious crime is very real and we've seen that over the last several weeks with the number of arsons that have been committed as well as, as, well as other intimidation offences. So uh, th this is the choice they're making. Um, it doesn't mean that they should be the subject of serious crime. Uh, our focus is on identifying the people committing these offences and holding them accountable for that. One of the challenges is these organised crime groups are using third parties to commit some of these arson offences, which gives them a degree of separation and it makes that's an, a challenging element of the investigation process, but we are continuing to work through that. And why are, they, why are these criminal syndicates from interstate moving into a gaining foothold in South Australia? Well, the reality is the, um, it, uh, the risks associated with importing and selling illicit tobacco are far outweighed by the profit, and these criminal networks have established premises in South Australia, so they're looking to ensure that they are getting the lion's share of the market or leveraging uh, some for, form of payment from those stores that are not selling their product. In uh, Victoria, these uh, tobacco wars have escalated to include shootings. Is there any risk of that happening in South Australia? Absolutely, there is a risk of these types of um, activities escalating to acts which are more likely to cause harm to individuals. Um, and we're very concerned about that. That's part of the reason why we've been working uh, to eradicate this type of activity in South Australia. As I've said, these are challenging investigations, but we, uh, we're not holding back in terms of our efforts to prevent these types of crime from occurring and holding people accountable when we do identify them as responsible for arsons or other serious offences. Um, is Operation Eclipse and Operation Melwood working together on these arson attacks? There's no direct linkage between Operation Meld and Operation Eclipse at this time, but obviously if there is that identified linkage, they'll be working together. So you haven't noticed um, a tobacconist approaching 
maybe someone from African Youth Games to be doing any of these jobs? I won't elaborate at this point in time on who we believe may be responsible, but uh, at this point in time our focus is on the interstate organised crime groups that are operating in South Australia. Are you are police aware of any fresh threats sent to store in these areas this morning? Uh, we are aware of uh, threats that have been uh, made via social media to different store owners. They are being investigated. We have information uh, that suggests the identity of the person sending those threats and that's currently being investigated. What has been the biggest challenge for SA Police in getting on top of these crimes? Firstly, uh, the, the manner in which they're being conducted, uh, the, the number of stores that may potentially be a target of these offences, uh, the time of day, the availability of resources at that time of day, the, the ease with which uh, the people committing the arson offences are able to sort of sneak back into the, into the shadows, and obviously the, um, the frequency of these offences as well. These are complex investigations that take resources to investigate and with offences occurring, occurring almost every day. That, that is a significant investigation workload that we have to manage. Do you believe arresting this 34 year old man will reduce the amount of crimes? He is in this player enough to, to actually prevent these from happening? Uh, we're hopeful that this sends a very strong message to the people who are involved in perpetrating these offences and organising these offences, that we are taking this very seriously and we're pulling out all stops to ensure that we can identify the people responsible, take action, remand them in custody and prevent further offences. I wouldn't go so far as to say this arrest will prevent further arson offences, but we're hopeful that it's sending a very strong message back that we're not going to tolerate this type of behaviour in South Australia. And the last couple of questions, go on, sir. Commissioner, just on another matter really quickly, why did SA Police deem it necessary to uh, create a public precinct in Port Augusta for the next six months? Uh, we made an application to the Attorney General uh, for uh, a de declared public precinct for the CBD of Port Augusta, and that's on the basis of the escalation of antisocial behaviour and other criminal activities that occur within that precinct over the summer months with the additional influx of people into that environment. Uh, we have significant statistical evidence that shows that this type of um, expanded powers for police is necessary and appropriate to ensure that we can do as much as we can to ensure a safe environment for patrons, visitors to the Port Augusta CBD. Can you just elaborate on antisocial behaviour? What specifically does that mean? It's behaviour that uh, uh, causes people to feel unsafe in that environment, uh, threatening behaviour, um, uh, intoxication, um, offensive language, uh, associated with other crimes such as shop theft, and assault, all of those types of things, um, do tend to increase in the Port Augusta CBD over the summer months and this gives us more tools to be able to prevent that from happening. Just in regards to the, the fresh threat and that you're aware of that one person sending it, do you believe this one person is linked to these three organised crimes? What I will say is that the person sending the threat is definitely associated with the offences we are currently investigating. Can you disclose the motivation for the tobacco bot, um, arson attack so far? The arson attacks are being committed as an intimidation tactic against retail distributors of illicit tobacco for them to be paying a fee or a levy to organise crime or to put them out of business. That is the basic reason for these offences being committed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.